Hey, a quick review of a book that I just finished. Um, excuse voice being a bit funny. I've been a bit under the weather the last couple of days. Um, this one is called The Man Who Disappeared, and it's by Claire Morrell. And as you can see, there's a, a picture on the cover of an open door and a broken chandelier, which is intriguing. Um, and it says underneath, by the author of the book, a shortlisted Astonishing Splashes of Colour, which was a book that I enjoyed years ago. I don't think she's, I don't know whether she's released another one. That was 2003, so that's seven years ago. Although, I don't know if she has written others. Natural Flight of the Human Mind in 2006 and Third, The Language of Others in 2008. Might have to look them up. I didn't realise she had any in between. Um, anyway, as you can see, it's one of the spec savers, the TV book club summer reads for Channel 4. And I got this in Tesco and I buy one, get one free. Um, this was $7.99 and I also picked up with it the new Jennifer Weiner. Weiner, Best Friends Forever, um, which, so this one was $7.99 and this one was $6.99, so I paid $7.99 and got two books. Um, so that made them £4 each instead of 7 and 8 which is a bit of a difference really. Although I did prefer the 3 86 each or 2 for 7 in Tesco, the same as Asda, because then you could justify just buying one. Um, anyway, it made me pick this one up, so... Yeah, so it says on the front, Kate Saunders for The Times said that it is a wise, intelligent and surprising novel in which, as in life, nothing is simple. Um, Rachel Hall, who is also an amazing author, who obviously also writes for The Independent on Sunday, said she gave it a lovely review. She said, down at the core, beneath its several layers, the man who disappeared is a well-crafted suspense story. Morale digs beneath the surface to mine psychological nuggets, some of them gold. And Tom Adair for the Scotsman said, a highly achieved and grossing read, superbly imagined, it reads like documentary truth. And the blurb on the back says, what would you do if out of the blue your husband disappeared and you found out he was a suspected criminal? When reliable, respectable Felix Kendall vanishes, his wife Kate is left reeling. As she and their children cope with the shocking impact on their comfortable lives, Kate realises that, if Felix is guilty, she never truly knew the man she loved. But, as she faces the possibility that he might not return, she also discovers strengths she never knew she had. Um, that's the spine design there. And it's... That's how thick it is there. You can see the side. It's not too thick. It is... Well... No, it's not really. It's fairly average length. It's 376 pages. And as you can probably see, the font is fairly average sized. Um, I really enjoyed this. I read this in two evenings um, when I wasn't feeling so great. So it was a fairly easy read, fairly easy to get into. Um, yeah, I think it was part mystery, part suspense story, bit of a thriller. While at the same time, you know, there was sort of elements of chiclet in there and, you know, elements of the, the main woman's life, Kate, and her children. So, you know, family life and how their family life changes, really, and um, how her life changes and how her children's life changes, children's lives change even. Um, yeah, I found it a really good read. It was, it started, for, I was fairly well hooked from the first few pages, actually. Um, um, the opening paragraph is, it starts with, Felix Kendall stands in the darkness outside the friendly circle of life from the street lamp. Cool seeps into him, numbing his fingertips. A breeze rustles and the larch is in the front garden of the house behind him on the opposite side of the road. He watches. So straight away you're left wondering what he's watching and why, and you're into it from there, really. Um, and then it goes on to describing the family and so on and so forth. So, yeah. Um, she has a really good way with words. There are certain... Um, I'll not spoil it by telling you any of them, but there are certain set lines in this book that just make you stop and draw breath they're so exquisitely written um 
and she has a, a really good way of writing so that you're intrigued and you're hooked, but so that it's not complex and complicated. And it sort of dots around from character to character, but again, she has a knack of making it so you can keep up with what's going on and who you're talking about now and so on and so forth. And the psychological element of it is uh, really interesting as well. So, yeah, so I'd strongly recommend that you read this book. Um, go and get it from Tesco and get two for seven ninety nine, um, or get it from wherever, but I think everybody ought to read this one. So if you've read this one below, sorry, if you've read this one, comment below and tell me what you thought of it. If you decide to read it, let me know. I'll do a video response. And if you've read any of her earlier novels as well, let me know what you thought of them. As I say, I loved Astonishing Splashes of Colour, but I haven't read any of the two in between this one and that one. So um, let me know what you think. And I hope that if you do choose to read this, you enjoy it as much as I did. And I shall talk to you soon. Um, also, a random question, because this keeps coming up time and time again. I c I've always been anal about books, even if, even if I've bought them second hand. I like them to sort of stay in decent condition. Obviously, if you buy them secondhand and they're, you know, battered and whatnot. I mean, this one was one that I bought secondhand, which you can see is fairly well, you know. But even then, I like to take my, you know, take care with them and take my time with them and be gentle with them. But this was bought brand new, and I mean, you can tell from the spine. There's no creases. It doesn't look like it's been read. And so many people say to me, "How can you possibly read a paperback without breaking the spine?" But I just can't. I mean, I sort of hold it like that when I read it, and it's perfectly enough to read it, but it doesn't crack the spine. So I'd love to know, also, I might post a separate video about this one day, but I would also love to know whether you're anal about condition of books and whether it irks you if you loan them out and they come back damaged, and whether you can read a book without breaking the spine or whether it doesn't bother you. Um, along with that, my pet hates are people who open books like that and put them down, or people who do this business and fold pages back as bookmarks. So I think I will one day post a separate video on that topic, but for now, let me know what you think below. Okay, take care. Talk to you soon.